right? So just to recap, so again, a React is just a view library on its own. It just knows how to render some JavaScript and then render it into HTML, right? And then you combine these multiple components together and then you say, okay, so these three components, AKA component composition, now look to me like this is my page, right? But I would like to have another page now. So how do I do that? How can now I have different views, pages? Hmm, how can I achieve that? Well, I need a router. I need a router. And what is a router? Well, a router is something that maps the URL to HTML, map URL to some HTML, right? So when I click on slash home, I want to render this HTML. And when I click to slash about, I want to render this. So router really is a mapping between your, let's say on a low level HTML when it's rendered, right? So then you say, how do I do that in React? Ah, I, I use React router DOM. Why DOM? Well, because it stands for document object model, right? And document object model is how we interface with a HTML document in the browser. So Alex, are you saying that there's more ways to use React? Yeah, there's React Native. You can render React to the native devices. So that's why uh, React team has broken these things down into different routers. So for the browser, for the web pages, we use React Router DOMs. And what is this React Router DOM doing? Well, underneath, it's really using HTML5 history API. And uh, it's making me, you know, it's making my browser history filled, you know, history.push, pull, replace, blah, blah, blah. And then that's how I can map things to each other. So when I click page one, I'm gonna use these three components together when I, right? And that's really all that there is when it comes to single page applications, really. This applies, what I just explained, applies to every single library or UI framework out there, like Angular or whatever, right? But without all of this noise, right? Without this noise, I don't think it's complicated at all. I think it cannot be, it's so simple because React, again, just knows how to render some JavaScript, some JSON or some JavaScript object into an HTML. So what React really does, it says underneath, I have, you know, React create element, which takes in some stuff, which is, you know, just abstracted with this called JSX. And this object that has some properties is really translated. And this is what uh, XHTML is doing as well. This is what every single library ever in history of UI has done. So here in React has, you know, I have this JSON and I'm gonna produce some HTML out of, out of it. That's what React does. That's where it ends. And then it, it, it provides hooks and state things, right? And then as I said, then you grow it in complexity. You say, well, I don't need just one page. I need multiple pages and I want to be able to switch between them. Well, you need a router. And then you say, ah, oh, my state is really complicated. I have a lot of this global state. I have a lot of these things all over the place, but this state needs to be reused all over the place. You maybe need a state machine, a Redux, or maybe you just can use context, or maybe you don't need any of that. So these are the decisions you make as a professional, but the complexity increases as the, as the requirements of your application increase. If you're building a to-do app, that has a single view, you don't need a router, you don't need a state machine, you don't need anything. You don't need a, you don't need a caching mechanism. You can use literally React, which is three kilobytes and build your to-do app. But if you're building a large scale internet application with dashboards and a massive data and permissions and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, then your requirements are gonna be different, which, mean, which means you're gonna have to install more things, right? Okay, but why, yeah, okay, but why instead of the browsers improve the web want to frame frameworks, but framework is just a set of established patterns that we learned about, right? So uh, I, I, I don't think, you, I think in order for you to understand how important frameworks are, you have to make a step back and understand how painful would it be to build things without frameworks. Let me give you an example. Imagine you wanna change your job. You imagine that you work in a company called Foo. And at company Foo, you had your own UI library. You called it Johnny, Johnny UI. 
you had your own router, your own blah, blah, blah. Then you move to company called Bar. At company Bar, they have Nancy UI. Completely different. Router is different, syntax is different, rendering engine is different. Now, Shootems has to learn everything from scratch. What does this mean for the business? It means tragedy. Imagine how long would it take us, and it already takes way too long. Imagine how long would it take an average developer or a team to build anything if you had to learn 5 million different routers, right? So frameworks exist not because some sweaty developer wants that. It's because business requires it. It's the same reason why a hammer exists. It's the same reason why a jigsaw exists. Because if I had to hit a nail in this wall, I'm not going to go get some stone out of the mountains and make my own hammer. That would be ridiculous, right? So is this, the reason why frameworks exist is business. You need to ease the hiring process, hiring people. How do we onboard people very quickly? Well, we constrain them in this set of constraints, in this framework, in these patterns that we know that they work. And now when uh, now we don't have Johnny UIs and Nancy UIs anymore, now we have few established patterns that people can learn and get their hands dirty the first day when they go to a new work, right? You can already push your first commit, right? So frameworks must exist, not for the reasons that a sweaty developer might imagine, it's because of business, because keep in mind that computers exist to support business, not vice versa. If you read the history of computers and why they actually, why we built them initially, it was money, right? Uh, and if you don't trust me, right? Try to, to build your own tools. Uh, and you know what you're going to realize? So try, say, why, why, do, why do we use frameworks? Why don't we just, uh, you know, um, why don't I use uh, HTML5 history API? Why don't I use plain JavaScript, right? Why do I need frameworks, right? I'm going to build my own rendering. I'm going to be my, build my own uh, fetching mechanism. I'm going to use some HTTP base client library in the browser. And you know where you, you know where you would end? You would end with replication of modern frameworks. You would search, you would use ChatGPT, you would go to Stack Overflow, you would build these things, and then you would realize, well, actually what I want is React or Vue or Angular, right? So it's a, it's, it's, it's very even um, immature to question frameworks, right? And again, if you, if you disagree, do this and see where you ended compared to existing things. Right? And try hiring people. So build your own tooling and try hiring people. So when Nancy and John come to an interview, tell them, uh, you know, in order for you to, to pass, you have to use our own Nancy JS. And they're like, man, but I've never seen Nancy JS in my life. How will I build an app with it, right? I think you, you get the point, right? Yep, that's it.